I hope I am being recorded or live. I can't see from here what it says on my little phone screen. And I hope you can hear me. Um, I'm here alone in a locked church building. Our wonderful and precious St. Aldhams, but I'm not alone, I really believe. Uh, I'm sure the angels are looking on curiously from the rafters as they are with you in your homes and wherever you're watching this. Most of all, I feel I'm with, with you and celebrating this Eucharist on behalf of and with you all. I'm also joined by Tuto, my cat, um, who's kind of in awe of this building the last few mornings. I've brought him over here and um, he's just beside himself with exploring. So you might see him, you might see me stepping out of his way at times. I'm going to, um, this order of service, for this service, we've sent by email to everyone on our list. I think it's accessible with a link on the Facebook page as well, the church Facebook page. Um, but please, if you would like to be on our list for emails, just let us know. Some of you have sent requests for prayers, and I'll include those in the service. Some of you have asked me to light a candle on your behalf, and I'll also be doing that. Other requests can be made, and we'll share that together another time. I'll try and post a photograph of the candles lit. As we usually do here, we can have a few moments of quiet. Um, I'll go to ring the Angelus. Uh, the sequence of bells accompanies some very short responses and prayers, the focus of which is on God's incarnation, his coming into the world in Christ Jesus. So what it's reminding us is that God is not far off, looking on from a safe distance. He's right here with us and with all those in the midst of this crisis that we share in different ways together. Uh, you'll see I've lit the incense. You'll have to imagine the smell, and I hope it's not making you cough. I'll be with you after ringing the Angelus, and you can use this time to pray, get a cup of tea, whatever you wish. If you don't have the order of service, please don't worry. You are joined with us in communion just the same. We meet in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Almighty God, unto whom all hearts are open, all desires known, 
and from whom no secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. We express sorrow for our sins and failings and selfishness and our complicit, complicity, complicitness in the sins of all the world. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And the collect for this, the fifth Sunday in Lent, called Passion Sunday, because we begin to focus more and more now on the remembrance of our Lord's passion, his suffering and death on the cross, and of course then his rising again from the dead at Easter. Most merciful God, who by the death and resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, delivered and saved the world, grant that by faith in him who suffered on the cross, we may triumph in the power of his victory through Jesus Christ our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. I'm going to use um, all the permitted readings today. The first is quite short from Ezekiel in the Old Testament, and it's all about bones taking flesh and spirit and becoming alive again, a metaphor for how each of us and all our world might be made more alive through God's Spirit. The Lord says this, I'm now going to open your graves. I mean to raise you from your graves, my people, and lead you back to the soil of Israel. And you will know that I am the Lord when I open your graves and raise you from your graves, my people. And I shall put my spirit in you, and you will live, and I shall resettle you on your own soil, and you will know that I, the Lord, have said and done this. It is the Lord who speaks. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And some lines from Psalm 130, and the response is, with the Lord, there is mercy. With the Lord, there is mercy. Out of the depths I cry to you, O Lord. Lord, hear my voice. O let your ears be attentive to the voice of my pleading. With the Lord, there is mercy. If you, O Lord, should mark our guilt, Lord, who would survive? But with you is found forgiveness. For this we revere you. With the Lord there is mercy. My soul is waiting for the Lord. I count on his word. My soul is longing for the Lord more than watchmen for daybreak. With the Lord there is mercy. Because with the Lord there is mercy and fullness of redemption, Israel indeed he will redeem from all its iniquity. With the Lord there is mercy. And another quite short reading from the letter of Paul to the Romans, reminding us that the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead is living in you. People who are interested only in unspiritual things can never be pleasing to God. Your interests, however, are not to be unspiritual, but spiritual, since the spirit of God has made his home in you. In fact, unless you possess the Spirit of Christ, you would not belong to him. Though your body may be dead, it is because of sin. 
But if Christ is in you, then your spirit is life itself, because you have been justified. And if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead is living in you, then he who raised Jesus from the dead will give life to your own mortal bodies through his spirit living in you. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And now, it's quite a long one, but wonderful gospel reading. Now, hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to St. John. Glory to you, O Lord. There was a man named Lazarus who lived in the village of Bethany with the two sisters, Mary and Martha, and he was ill. It was the same Mary, the sister of the sick man Lazarus, who anointed the Lord with ointment and wiped his feet with her hair. The sisters sent this message to Jesus, Lord, the man you love is ill. On receiving the message, Jesus said, this sickness will end not in death, but in God's glory, and through it the Son of God will be glorified. Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus, Yet when he heard that Lazarus was ill, he stayed where he was for two more days before saying to the disciples, let us go to Judea. The disciples said, Rabbi, it is not long since the Jews wanted to stone you. Are you going back again? Jesus replied, are there not 12 hours in the day? A man can walk in the daytime without stumbling because he has the light of this world to see by. But if he walks at night, he stumbles because there is no light to guide him. He said this and then added, our friend Lazarus is resting. I am going to wake him. The disciples said to him, Lord, if he is able to rest, he is sure to get better. The phrase Jesus used referred to the death of Lazarus, but they thought that by rest, he meant sleep. So Jesus put it plainly, Lazarus is dead. And for your sake, I am glad I was not there because now you will believe but let us go to him. Then Thomas, known as the twin, said to the other disciples, let us go too and die with him. On arriving, Jesus found that Lazarus had been in the tomb for four days already. Bethany is only about two miles from Jerusalem, and many Jews had come to Martha and Mary to sympathize with them over their brother. When Martha heard that Jesus had come, she went to meet him. Mary remained sitting in the house, Martha said to Jesus, if you had been here, my brother would not have died, but I know that even now, whatever you ask of God, he will grant you. Your brother, said Jesus to her, will rise again. Martha said, I know he will rise again at the resurrection on the last day. Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. If anyone believes in me, even though he dies, he will live. And whoever lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? Yes, Lord, she said. I believe that you are the Christ, the Son of God, the one who was to come into the world. When she had said this, she went and called her sister Mary, saying in a low voice, The Master is here and wants to see you. Hearing this, Mary got up quickly and went to him. Jesus had not yet come into the village. He was still at the place where Martha had met him. When the Jews who were in the house sympathizing with Mary saw her get up so quickly and go out, they followed her thinking that she was going to the tomb to weep there. Mary went to Jesus, and as soon as she saw him, she threw herself at his feet, saying, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. At the sight of her tears and those of the Jews who followed her, Jesus said in great distress, with a sigh that came straight from the heart. Where have you put him? They said, Lord, come and see. Jesus wept. And the Jews said, see how much he loved him. But there were some who remarked, he opened the eyes of the blind man. Could he not have prevented this man's death? Still sighing, Jesus reached the tomb. It was a cave with a stone to close, to close the opening. Jesus said, take the stone away. Martha said to him, Lord, by now he will smell 
this is the fourth day. Jesus replied, have I not told you that if you believe, you will see the glory of God? So they took away the stone. Then Jesus lifted up his eyes and said, Father, I thank you for hearing my prayer. I knew indeed that you always hear me, but I speak for the sake of all those who stand round me, so that they may believe it was you who sent me. When he had said this, he cried in a loud voice, Lazarus, come forth. The dead man came out, his feet and hands bound with bands of stuff and a cloth round his face. Jesus said to them, Unbind him, let him go free. Many of the Jews who had come to visit Mary and had seen what he did, believed in him. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Before I reflect, I'll come round and see if there's any signs to tell me that you can see me and hear me. Good? Okay. <laughs> I think that's telling me that we are in touch. Um, in John's Gospel especially, there is almost a, a series of signs and John highlights these as revealing what Jesus brings to all of us. In the Gospels, in the Bible, of course Jesus, as we all know, performs miracles. But the way they are described, and the way especially that John treats them in his Gospel, it's clear that the intention of Jesus and the intention of the gospel writers is not simply to amaze other people in the way that a famous person or celebrity might amaze us. No, always the intention is to demonstrate to us, to those around, and to us now from this distance, to help us know that what it is Jesus is showing through his extraordinary acts is opening God's possibilities for you and for me. Now, the series of signs begins for John with the changing of water into wine. You may remember that story, and we normally remember it in church shortly after New Year. There's a whole series of them, but you could say this is, this is the big one. The raising of Lazarus from the grave. And of course, it's shortly after this that Jesus ceases performing miracles because he's now orientating himself more and more towards the real showdown, which is with his own death. And so he no longer performs miracles because there is an even greater message and revelation to be seen in his accepting suffering and his not responding with miracles, but with patience and passion and love on the cross. But let's just reflect on this, the big sign that is almost the culmination of John's series, and see how it applies to us at all times, and I think very much so right now. Lazarus is dead in the tomb. And we too, in our different ways, experience at times a sense of our own being dead to all God's possibilities and to 
the joy and the love and the potential that God desires for us. And right now, as people are either working all hours in hospitals, in care homes, in supermarkets, in making deliveries, in public services, in all kinds of ways, while others, of course, rightly are having to be confined and locked down, as it were, for everyone's benefit, we may have an opportunity at this strange period in our lives and the life of our nation and our world to reflect what are we given this precious life for and how often do we forget and lose touch with the real wellsprings of life that we have been given. And so Lazarus' death kind of signifies our own sense of being dead and in a tomb and cut off from help, sometimes cut off from others, just as some of you must feel cut off right now from grandchildren and relatives and friends and others. And to all of us, in whatever kind of tomb we feel ourselves to be, Jesus says, roll that stone away. And he calls forth in a very loud voice, your name, my name, Lazarus, come out, come forth. When Lazarus does so, he's still clad and covered with the bandages and dressings that they would use in those days rather than a coffin when burying the dead. And I think that may even signify to us the way in which we, our face, often feels covered by a mask. At the moment, we're getting used to seeing people in protective masks but actually don't we often feel like that that there's a kind of mask we're trying to pretend trying to put on a good front or whatever front we can manage but all the time God is saying take away those bandages your true face is beautiful in my God's eyes Step forth and be rejoined with your family, with your community, with all those you love and who love you, with all those you need to forgive and who need to forgive you. And maybe this time of isolation for us all might be a reminder of that time in the tomb and of God's message to all of us. Even though we are cut off physically from each other, come forth, take away those bandages, and live again more fully and more in unity and more in Christ. Amen. For our creed or profession of faith, there are some simple questions on the order of service. If you don't have that, the response, the main response is, if you wish to make it, I believe and trust in him. Do you believe and trust in God the Father, source of all being and life, the one for whom we exist? I believe and trust in him. Do you believe and trust in God the Son, who took our human nature, died for us, and rose again? I believe and trust in him. Do you believe and trust in God the Holy Spirit, who gives life to the people of God, 
and makes Christ known in the world. I believe and trust in him. This is the faith of the church. This is our faith. We believe and trust in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Uh, that's handy. I've got a page missing from my order of service, I think. What could possibly go wrong? <laughs> but the prayers come next. So for the prayers, I'm going to go and light a few candles. I hope you'll be able to see me. And um, this is curious. But we'll carry on. Um, I'm going to light a few candles. But we're offering these prayers. We're offering this whole service, really, on behalf of our whole parish, whether people attend church or not, they need to know deep down that they are held in prayer, all of them. We offer this Eucharist for all those on the front line of this crisis, in hospitals, paramedics, in um, care homes, in all those who are caring for the mentally distressed, in shops and supermarkets and delivery vans, public services and utilities, essential work carrying on, of course. We offer it for the isolated and the sick and for one another. And I've been asked to pray especially for Maureen Blake, who appears to have symptoms of the coronavirus. May God bless and protect her and give her peace during this anxious time. For John Heaslip, who was being tested in hospital for coronavirus, who is very sick. And for his wife, Denise, who of course typically is unable to visit him. Pray for Gough Smith, the brother of a friend of mine who is very ill with coronavirus and pneumonia in hospital in Oxford, but um, showing signs of improvement. We pray for his wife, Jane, and their son, Matthew, and for Steve, my friend, who again is unable to visit him. Remember Elsie Sharp in hospital? And again, the daughter not allowed to visit at the moment. And for Amy Warren in hospital, for her husband Peter, daughters and grandchildren. Remember Eugene Christie, whose funeral was last week. And pray for Pam. And also for Wendy, a teacher who, was, who has died through the coronavirus, who was a very good friend of a good friend of mine. So if you can see me, I'm going to light some candles. And if you have any other requests for prayers or um, would like me to light a candle for you, do let me know. I'll try and post a photograph. So I light a candle on behalf of Ruth, uh, Michelle Blake, and praying for her mother, Maureen, I've asked to, be, to light a candle on behalf of Philip, a paramedic, and all those working on the front line of the NHS. For Richard, and Paul and Sarah, who again are thinking and praying for, as we all are, all those so badly affected by this crisis. So calling to mind our own particular prayers for one another, for ourselves, we say, 
merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Now I'm kind of running blind here regarding the order of service. But I believe it's the peace. And I will just give a bow to all and each one of you as my exchange of the peace. But in Christ, we embrace. We give each other a hug, albeit virtually. The peace of the Lord be always with you. I'll just clean my hands again. Now, if some of you want to have and have got prepared a little bit of bread and wine or whatever you'd like to share with just yourself or those around you, you're very welcome to. It doesn't, it's not obligatory, you don't need to, um, but you might find it helpful, and if so, why not? But from a distance, we all share spiritually in this communion. So the bread and wine, which will become for us the sacrament of Christ's body and blood, our way of being joined to our Lord in his suffering, in his teaching, in his life, in his miracles, in his death, and in his resurrection. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. God of glory, you are worthy of thanks and praise because you set humanity in a garden of delight to glorify and enjoy you forever. When that garden turned into a valley of dry bones, you entered the valley in the form of Jesus Christ. You breathed life into the dry bones and made them sing again. You put your spirit within us that we might live. For the crucified Christ you became, in the crucified Christ you became dry bones for us. And at Easter you showed us how to dance again. And so as your resurrected people, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we join in singing your unending praise. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Listening God, you heard your son Jesus when he called on you in the face of Lazarus' death. Hear us now as we call upon you to bring new life through this meal of memory and hope. Come among us in the power of your Holy Spirit that your people may be transformed from dry bones to your living body and that these gifts of bread and wine may become for us the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. So if you have bread at home and wish to take hold of that and Hold it in a particular way, with intention. Who at supper with his disciples took bread, gave you thanks, broke the bread, and gave it to them, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. After supper he took the cup, again he gave you thanks, and gave it to his disciples, saying, 
Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Let us proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Resurrecting God, where your people are in the valley of the shadow of death, bring them your words of prophecy and hope. Where they are in the place of stench and decay, give them the balm of your healing and forgiveness. Where they are under the weight of grief and depression, roll away the stone. Make us your church, a place where dust can dream, where dry bones become flesh, where nobodies become your body. Reveal through Lazarus a foretaste of the resurrection of all creation, where when every tearful eye will gaze upon your consolation and every weary throat be filled with your song until every stone is rolled from every tomb and you sit in glory, the resurrection and the life, Father, Son and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Now let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy upon us. O Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. God's holy gifts for God's holy people. Jesus Christ is holy, Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. And of course, if you wish to share, take to eat yourself bread or wine as your help in communing with this Eucharist. But believe me, in God's spirit, you all share in this communion. body of Christ, which was given for thee. Preserve thy body and soul into everlasting life. Take and eat this in remembrance that Christ died for thee, and feed on him in thy heart, thy faith with thanksgiving. Amen. The blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, which was shed for thee, preserve thy body and soul into everlasting life. Drink this in remembrance that Christ's blood was shed for thee, and be thankful. Amen.
I'll say this prayer that the church has commended to us during this time. Keep us, good Lord, under the shadow of your mercy. Sustain and support the anxious, be with those who care for the sick, and lift up all who are brought low, that we may find comfort knowing that nothing can separate us from your love in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Before the blessing, um, Tuto the cat is prowling around. Um, before the blessing, um, yeah, just to mention that this week we'll also be attempting to broadcast live a Bible reflection of about 10 minutes on Tuesday morning at 10 o'clock. Um, on Wednesday at 11 o'clock, Bryony and Carol invite you to a virtual coffee morning and you can access that. It's very simple, I'm told. Even people like me might be able to manage it to download a very safe and simple app on your computer or phone called Zoom and then just get the access code. Um, it'll be posted on our Facebook page. Uh, that's on Wednesday at 11, and on Thursday at 7 p.m., I will celebrate a Eucharist from the vicarage. And I hope that will continue, but we might move that around all our clergy over the coming weeks. So it will be from different homes. If you aren't on our email list, would like, us, would like to be, just let us know with a post or a, a message or a phone call. Um, and if you want me to pray for anything in particular, equally let me know, let us know. Um, and I'll also light a candle later on for any other requests and post a photograph. Not sure if we said the prayer of thanksgiving. Um, I'm not sure, <laughs> and you can't tell me. So um, I'll say it again then. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. Now the Lord God bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. And the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you and knit us all together in Christ's one body. Now, and always. Amen. So you may not be able to go very far, but go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. Thank you.